think? I'll let you solve the debate here. Are you going Jags? Mm -hmm. Are you going Giants? Uh, honestly, I see where you're going back and forth because this is a tough one to call. I mean, when you look at the stats, like the New York Giants get ran through on defense. The Jags are actually pretty tough on defense. And the New York Giants defense, they're strong against the pass. And Jacksonville, they're in the bottom third against the pass. And so you really just try to think about how are these teams coming into this game. The New York Giants have been pretty successful. They're riding a hot streak right now, beating a couple of teams that people felt like they probably shouldn't have beaten. And then at the other end of the stick, you have the Jacksonville Jaguars who started off the season hot, and then you lose a game to the Texans that you probably should have won. And then you have a barn burner with the Colts going all the way down to the end, and then the Colts getting that one against you. And so now you get to play this hot Giants team at home. Are they coming in a little bit too overconfident? I don't think so. I think Brian Dayball is coaching that team well. I think they're going to come in with the right mindset. So I would probably expect this game to play relatively close. Uh, that being said, like my play on this game, you have the over under at 41 and a half. I probably lean towards the under just because both of these offenses can kind yeah. of sputter and not really get it going at a time. If I had to choose a side, maybe it's Jacksonville bouncing back. I mean, you give them the home advantage. They're the home team. Maybe they're going to be the ones that win, but I wouldn't feel comfortable betting that. I feel more comfortable betting the under. That's fair. <laughs> okay. So you're on Jared's side. That's also fair. You're on Jared's you're side. You're on Lauren's shit list he's like, now. He's dipping you're like a toe list. into your side. He's still on the fence, but he's dipping a toe just into Jared's side at this point. How about this? Um, Let me give you one trend here. I, I won't get into my handicap of the game. I'll save that for play today. I want to mention okay. a very interesting trend, and we'll get both of your thoughts about it. Lauren, I know you love the trends. So – this is the oh, rare man. situation, very rare situation in the NFL. A team that has a winning percentage of 800 or higher, the Giants are 5-1. and one. At this stage of the season, again, after one or two games, it's not a big deal, but after six games, a team with a winning percentage of 800 or higher, a really good record, is an underdog against a team with a winning percentage of 400 or lower, a.e. a really bad team with a 2-4 and four record. When the team with the worst record is the favorite in those situations. They've never lost. 9-0 and straight up, 8-0-1 against That's pretty Minnesota. crazy. And the point is the market is tends to get these games right. Right now the market's telling you the Giants are a worse football team than the Jaguars, but the records on paper, wait a minute, 5-1, and one, that doesn't make sense. The market tends to be right about these games. That's all I'm going to say. Anything can happen once the ball gets kicked off. But historically speaking, when it's a really good team with a good record, that's an underdog against a crappy team with a crappy record. Usually the crappy team with the crappier record wins. That is actually a really is crazy that trend. Um, that is real. Yeah. Nine to no. Okay. That makes me a little bit nervous. At the same time, <laughs> Jacksonville's only scored 18 points per game over the last three weeks. They've also turned over the ball about three times per game over the last three weeks. I love the Giants. I love the belief that they have. I love the, how Brian Dable is coaching this team. I love Saquon Barkley and how he's been playing this season, finally healthy. There's just so many pieces that I like. And a lot of, you know, you could be like, oh, the Giants have lost a majority of their games by one score or less, or other teams are averaging more yards per game than the Giants are. All that matters at the end of the day is the scoreboard, right? We can look at all of those stats, but it's the way that the Giants are finishing some of these games and the way that Brian Dable is coaching them. And that's more of an eye test for me. I just like see that will to win. And there's something to be said about motivation and playing for a coach that you extremely respect.